everybody, Eric and I are back with the Right View MN and we are so excited to be coming in front of you today in front of the camera uh, to tell you about the happenings uh, that have been going on this week. Um, please ignore my voice. I've been suffering with this awful cold that's been going around. It's been pretty gross. You haven't gotten sick yet. I don't have it yet. I hope you don't give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this is going to be one of those episodes where we're just going to laugh a lot because previous to starting to record, there was some funny stuff going on. I can't wait for you to meet our special guest um, who will be coming up uh, shortly. Yeah, absolutely. But before we get to our Spotlight special guest, uh, we have a few uh, Bill highlights that have been introduced this week. And as we mentioned last week, some things were going to be uh, exciting and happy. But this is one of those bill introductions that is not so good yeah. for Minnesotans. Not so good. Uh, election integrity, uh, that's one of the topics I would say since uh, the voter ID idea has been brought forward back in 2011, 2012, and then of course it was voted down in the constitutional amendment. Voters really want um, voter integrity, election integrity. Um, House file number 94, I don't think brings much integrity into the election process. Just the exact opposite. And as you mentioned, Minnesotans expect that their vote counts and is not going to be diluted by somebody who may not be uh, qualifying for the vote that they're casting. Right. And as uh, we know, voter fraud does occur. Mm -hmm. And it's very unfortunate that the, the present majority party in the House doesn't support the reforms necessary in order to guarantee the integrity of our election systems. So what HF94, who was it introduced by here? Uh, Representative Vane. Representative Vane. So when a uh, present law permits or has a limitation, a cap on the number of people a person can help fill out the ballot for and, uh, in turn, and also vouch for, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it caps it at 10, but don't quote me on that. But what does this bill do? Uh, so right now, um, an individual can assist up to three people in filling out that ballot. Um, House File 94 would eliminate that, basically make it endless. So this is not pertaining to who the number of people a person can vouch for, but who they can assist fill out ballots. Out ballot. Now that is important in terms of filling out, because there are people that may have a disability and Absolutely. have a, a problem filling out and, and uh, need the assistance to fill out a ballot. Absolutely, that is something that needs to be in place. But there needs to be a cap on that so there's not abuse from one person filling out hundreds or dozens. Or the and, entire precinct. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm not sure what this is seeking to do. I don't know how it's going to benefit Minnesota. But to remove that cap and allow a single person to fill out the ballot for uh, dozens or, as you said, people, yeah. Yeah, it's something that... Uh, we need to keep our eye on, again, it's House File 94, mm -hmm. and watch that very closely. Yeah, and um, back to last week, we had talked about some of the gun bills, uh, along with the uh, committee structure change that brings less transparency to the process. I want to thank all of you who have contacted your legislators. I know that my inbox has been very busy with pro-Second Amendment people encouraging me not to support the anti-gun bills, which of course, those of you in my district and majority of you who are probably watching uh, this video know where I stand on our Second Amendment and there's no way I'm going to impede on, upon our constitutional right, especially when it comes to um, the red flag bill when it... Uh, there's no due process involved, and people are very concerned Absolutely, about that. Absolutely, as they and should they be. they're very fired up about that particular um, incident, and they're also very concerned about uh, the possible lack of transparency that's going to be taken place. As a matter of fact, uh, Representative Lucero, uh, the Public Safety and Judiciary Committee is where? Where is that being uh, It's actually in the basement. Yes, you know what I say about the basement hearing room when Democrats are in control? That is the room where liberty goes to die. Exactly. There's no cameras uh, in there. Uh, so many individuals, many activists who are, are, are watching these gun bills are in the hearing room recording it themselves for, uh, for the public record. Um, yeah, so this is definitely, uh, Democrats don't want you to see what's going on with your Second Amendment. They, they're hoping you're too busy in your That's personal right. life. Um, That's right. But you're going to show them and um, that you are paying attention. And I, I, I encourage you to continue reaching out to your legislators 
uh, every day, every week, uh, letting them know where you stand. It's way too important to ignore. Our constitutional rights are under attack by the metrocentric Democrats. And that is by design that they put us into the basement where there are no cameras. Right. But, well, as you mentioned, there are members of the public, and specifically I've seen Rob Doerr down there. Mm -hmm. Each of the, of the sessions we've had so far, Rob Doerr from the Minnesota Gun Owners Caucus, he's filming in order to shed light on the the terrible ideas that are going to be brought forth in that committee. So Yeah, and another thing I just found out today, too, is that the Senate's uh, Judiciary Committee meets at the same time as the House, which makes it impossible for people to testify ah. in the committees because you can't be in two committees at, at one time, right? So uh, I'm not sure how that is going to be rectified. Also, not a coincidence. No, probably not. Probably not. There's a lot of not, um, you know, quit. There's... A lot I'm sorry, my cold is getting in the way here. Um, I feel like I got a sniffle, like we hear President Trump sniffle on the phone, <laughs> yes. on, the, uh, on video, and I'm trying not to sniffle like that. Um, but anyway, uh, there's a lot of coincidences that are um, that are on purpose. I feel. That's right. That's right. Well, we have a special guest who's been waiting. I'm so excited. And our spotlight special guest this uh, uh, time this Who week is. It? is Representative Joe McDonald. Absolutely. Well, hello there. Special guest. I feel very special today. So. Absolutely. Hi. Well, thanks nice for joining us. You. Yes, thank you. It's good to be here. Very good well, to be here today for with you, the two of you and everyone uh, watching this uh, production. Uh, it, Representative McDonald and I, we were elected in the same year. We were uh, same class, elected in 2010. A long time ago. Oh, it feels Been like Been here it. for eight years. Wow. Almost well, if time has flied is. or flown, that must mean you've been having a good time. Uh, well, that's debatable. You, you know, when I first got elected uh, eight years ago, um, my folks and friends and family in Wright County, uh, same county that Eric Lucero represents as well, and matter of fact, folks from St. Michael and Albertville, when I represented that in my first two years. Prior to redistricting, yeah. Prior to redistricting, they would say, well, how are you liking it, Joe? I would say, like is a strong word. I, uh, you know, it's, it's great. If you don't have a, if you have a weak stomach, you're not supposed to watch sausage or law being made. <laughs> there we go. Exactly. So, uh, time does fly. It sometimes does. it's a good time. Uh, sometimes it's not such a good time. Uh, it's going to be an interesting two years, wouldn't you say? Uh, it'll be a, a very interesting two years. Yes. I mean, you know, for the, for the greater good, we're going to do hopefully what's great for Minnesota. Absolutely. Uh, the budget is way too big. First of all, mm -hmm. we're looking at $50 billion what being spent. What was the spent. budget? When we first got elected, when we first got elected in 2010, we served in 2011-12 with the budget year. It was 34 billion. Wow. Yeah, but that's what we increased it to. It, it was right when we got, first got elected. I don't recall that, but in our first term, we elect mm -hmm. we. Uh, uh, it was, the budget was projected to be 34 billion. We yeah. had a slogan: 34, not a penny more. Right. So in eight short years, it went from 34 billion to 50 billion dollars. Unbelievable. Now that's that's, that's what a lot happens of money. When you got uh, Democrats in control with an insatiable spending appetite. And the Democrats still are asking for more. It's more and more and more. Taxpayers keep having to dig deeper into their wallets and make the sacrifices from their own personal households in order to fund the government. And in fact, now, $1.5 billion surplus. I remember when we uh, were in the minority and... Or was it when we were in the minority? I think it... Was, or was it when we were in the majority? But anyway, uh, then um, Representative Matt Dean was on the on the House floor and um, speaking, saying, "Do you want a state that works, or do you want to work for Minnesota, or do you want a state that works for Minnesotans?" And I think Minnesotans right now are feeling that they're having to work more in order to pay for what uh, what government is asking. Well, and that's a fact. Tax Freedom Day, I forget the exact date, but it's late in the year. Uh, I believe it's June, July time frame? It's, it's into June, if I recall. Yeah. So, no, that, and that's terrible because Minnesotans, any taxpayer, no matter what state you live in, should not be working to fund government for nearly 50% if it is in June. Correct. Now, that said, there are many things that the state does that uh, is important. Uh, building roads and bridges and infrastructure so we can get to work and get to our businesses and get to our families and, and our cities uh, and have good commerce travel. That's very important. It's also very important that we take care of uh, uh, the sick and the elderly and the disabled. Right. Uh, Absolutely. As a Christian Judeo country, it is uh, our mission and our responsibility to take care of those who are less fortunate. 
And then also education. It's very important that we mm -hmm. educate. It's in our Constitution uh, that we educate. I think 13th uh, Amendment in our Constitution in the state that we, it's so important that we need to educate our children and have a good education. And that being said, uh, $50 billion for a two-year biennium is a lot of money. It's a lot of our hard-earned money. Matter of fact, it's projected, first of all. That money comes from businesses and families through corporate tax, income tax, sales tax, uh, every, every possible tax you can imagine um, comes from uh, taxpayers in Minnesota, those who are watching. Yet, I think There's many no Minnesotans do not have the confidence that the money is being spent the most efficiently and that they're receiving benefits or services to that tune. Not when they hear on the news of uh, instances, incidences that there's waste uh, of millions of dollars in our state. Hundreds of millions. Hundreds of millions, yes. Fraud, yeah. And, is, and in the case of the child care uh, subsidy, which you probably spoke about last week. So, yeah. yes, uh, it, when that happens, I think that uh, Minnesotans lose an uh, inch and inch by inch confidence in what we are doing down here. And uh, that's a really disappointment. Well, what's right. happening? You're on the taxes committee. What's taxes. happened this week? Anything? Taxes is a fun committee. Uh, fun, I mean, because it's very um, enlightening and, and everything we do in life is taxes. Matter of fact, we had an overview of the tax committee structure today and yesterday. We are taxed from cradle to grave. From the death tax to the six tax to the mortgage tax to the income tax to the, you name it, we are Gas taxed. Tax. Gas tax. And then after are, you die. This death tax. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So uh, it, it, we are overtaxed. We simply iTunes are overtaxed. Tax. iTunes, digital downloads. Mm -hmm. uh, there was an impact study done by, was it Keplinger's, that said the, no. that Minnesota is the least taxed business friendly state in That's the right. nation. The least business and that's a recent study. Yep. Yeah, the most tax yeah, state and the most the fall. most uh, least uh, business friendly in the nation, and that's simply uh, can't we can't allow that. To Which is to why businesses are fleeing Minnesota. We have neighbors that have a much friendlier tax environment, and that's exactly where businesses are moving to South Dakota uh, and others. Well, there's 33 states that don't have a death tax, or a, they call it a state tax, but it's really a death tax. You die, and you pay taxes on your mm -hmm. assets and your, uh, your assets and your property and uh, uh, to talk about a, actually a kind of an immoral absolutely tax. absolutely well there's actually an app you can download called where money walks and that'll tell you uh where your money from minnesota is actually going to um and it's, it's very interesting yeah well you know what i think that we you probably suggested that all minnesotans uh, download that app and at least watch where your tax your tax dollars are going? How is it being spent? Is it responsibly being spent, or is there room for improvement? Which there always is, of course. Well, where money walks is just where people are moving to from Minnesota. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah. The, you're right. Yep. The Center for the American Experiment did yes. a uh, report last year, and uh, their study indicates millions, hundreds of millions of dollars leave the state. Because money can walk. When you That's have that right. kind of income, it, it walks. Vote with your feet. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I know several folks just in my hometown of Delano. That uh, some have moved, uh, they're out of the state six months in one day, and some are contemplating. Yep, same, Absolutely. Uh, same with my district. That's just too. simply it's very sad. unsustainable. Yep. Uh, sad. Well, there are several rallies scheduled next week, and several of them are actually uh, uh, rallies that I would recommend if people are able to attend uh, to do so. The first rally coming up on Tuesday, the 22nd, beginning at noon, is MCCL's annual March for Life. That's always a good one. It Absolutely. Good one, yeah. we, mm -hmm. we value life here very much. Um, one of my pins, yeah, yep. yep, yep. Absolutely. Speaking of which... Joe, you usually have your pin on, too. I do. I don't have yeah. my pin on today, but uh, my uh, father, Nathan, he's our priest in uh, St. Maximilian Kobe in Delano, sent me an article today uh, that uh, says uh, the article was a response to uh, the Nordic states, the Nordic countries, uh, are having a huge deficit of children. Mm. They're, they're not reproducing, right. and uh, they're being out... Uh, basically, their existence could be, you know, that of nothing. So the states are Sweden, Denmark, Finland. Governments, which are a huge welfare state, are recognizing that there will not be enough children to be uh, sustaining the big welfare state as the age, those who are getting older age. So Sweden uh, and Finland and Denmark are offering thousands of dollars, up to 58000 or or $100,000 to women and men, of course, 
having babies. So Joel, you know the, 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 the advice, babies. Representative McDonald, the advice for them, be fruitful. Be fruitful and multiply. And multiply. Yes. Well, I think it says that in the Bible, does it not? That's yes, right. It does. Yeah. Um, That's right. Regarding that, uh, I just read a, a report not too long ago that nation or worldwide um, abortion is at its highest that it has been about one out of every four children. It's just shy wow. of one. It's like 23% of, of um, pregnancies end in abortion. Worldwide? Worldwide. Yeah, that's very, yes, that's it's, very it's tragic. It's very tragic. Absolutely tragic. And we are facing that um, workforce shortage here in Minnesota as well. And, you know, you look back on uh, Roe v. Wade, uh, that, has a, that has had a direct impact Absolutely. on our current workforce that we have today. Uh, you know, you can't, um, you can't, um, you know. Snuff out life. No. With, Fortunately, abortion is down in America, thanks be to God. Um, but because of the hard work. Because of the hard work. And the of, good work uh, of these pro-life organizations. Absolutely. Yep. So we thank you, MCCL, for, That's right. for coming to the Capitol and advocating for life. And uh, we, we enjoy those um, votes on the floor. That's and right. And able to... Yeah passionately defend life so again if you're able to attend that's tuesday the 22nd next week on the capitol steps beginning at noon another one that uh, if you're able to attend the next day wednesday the 23rd beginning at 1 30 p.m is national school choice week and so uh, i at least i and i, I presume that the uh, the two of you uh, agree that choice and education is very important and so and, the competition is good. Too. That's right. Absolutely. And we're not just talking uh, choice in terms of vouchers or tuition tax credits. All choice, all educational choice, which would include private school, home school, any alternative method to public charter education. Schools. Charter absolutely. school, absolutely. Public, public schools are... Not every you know. child learns the same. That's right. And not every, uh, not every um, building will suit that same child exactly so, the needs absolutely. Yeah, absolutely so that's a good rally when is that again Eric? that is on wednesday next week the 23rd beginning at 1 30. we were talking about guns earlier on thursday the uh 24th next week all day all is day. minnesota gun owners lobby day and i have a feeling the capital is going to be packed it's going to be thunderous absolutely I, I spoke to some individuals yesterday um, they're planning on um, gathering a bus, a charter bus from um, my district, which is 8B, um, and bringing a bunch of individuals down for that. And I'm just so excited that individuals are paying attention. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at least in my district, people always know exactly. I'm sure they know where you stand on issues, too. But so sometimes I don't hear a whole heck of a lot back from my constituents because they'll say, oh, Mary, we know where you stand on. But this year they are mm -hmm. very engaged. And I really enjoy that backup for my constituents so that when others say, hey, you need to support the other side, correct? Uh, I can say, no, listen, I... The majority of your majority district who you district, represent, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Totally. are in favor of this particular... Right. right. And for those that are permit to carry holders, in the state of Minnesota here, several years back, we, I think it was Representative Nash who actually carried the bill, if my memory serves, it must have been 2015. If you're a permit to carry holder, you can carry your gun on the Capitol grounds here. So uh, we know this truth, that more guns in the hands of law-abiding citizens equals less crime. So if you're a law-abiding citizen, and if you're a permit to carry holder, guns are welcome here in the Capitol grounds. But, but, correct, but they do require you or ask that you at least uh, notify nope, the Department that's of what Public was changed. Safety. Is that right? Nope, that's what was changed. You can you no, no longer, longer have to notify the Department of Public Safety. Having your permit to carry card serves as notification. Well, it'll be a safe place to be. That's right, that's right. Mary, you want to talk about the next rally, which is actually this coming yeah. Saturday. Yeah. What's this Saturday? So this Saturday is the Women's March. I'm right? not going, just for the record. You would think that it would encompass the entire all women, um, but it's mainly, you know, the, the pro Liberal choice. women? Liberal women, uh, the pink-hatted women. Uh, what's very interesting about the Women's March this year nationally, uh, the DNC has actually pulled out of the Women's March. No, yes. you don't say. Yes. <laughs> it's a little bit too extremist for them. And what's the uh, pink who's hats? The DNC? What are the pink hats people anyway? You'll have to use your imagination. We're not going to say that. There could be kids watching. So I guess I'll um, Google it. Or bring it. <laughs> um, but the DNC, for those who may not know. The, 
uh, Democrat National Committee. I uh, have pulled out. out from uh, sponsoring the National March that takes place in Washington, D.C. And then all across the country, um, different chapters of the Women's March have eliminated that march altogether. Why? Why do you think uh, that is? Ties to anti-Semitism. There's the women's march has ties to anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism, yes. So very that sad. Has, it's it's been uh, it's maddening. Very sad that it's it's taken that route. Um, but what's really shocking is that Minnesota is still continuing on with their march as of the 19th. I took a look at some of their sponsors, which I'm not going to go in and give them any advertisement on the Right View MN, but uh, you can go on to the Women's March uh, website yourself uh, um, for Minnesota and take a look and see it. Who is sponsoring this uh, not very nice march that's taking place on January the 19th? Say, speaking of marching, I would like to, Eric, march right down to the local Sears store and get a jacket just like that. Well, <laughs> that is a humdinger of a <laughs> jacket. He, you know, if you, you folks know that uh, Eric has a plethora and cacophony of wonderful suit jackets, and he bedazzles us with them quite often. But I must say, this one is one of my favorites. I've got to say, it's my favorite, too. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's, it's very... Now, this That's is... Amazing. This isn't... Uh, this is like a satiny... Satiny, velvet, velvet um, yeah. it's got some spandex in there. It's a lovely, like a smoker's jacket. Exactly, almost. I just yeah. seen a cigar. Right. I think I saw Elvis Presley wear that jacket once uh, no, at you've the got, Sands um, Hotel. Could have been. <laughs> you've got an interesting uh, a little lapel there. It's an ice cream cone. Is there a special special meaning behind that ice cream cone? You know, this is one of those controversial topics. Oh. Ice cream is a controversial oh. topic. Vanilla, chocolate, or strawberry. Some are pro, some are con. I can tell you, I am 100% inclusive and pro ice cream. <laughs> yeah, but what flavor? We want to know Everything. what flavor. It does, I don't discriminate on the... Like. Uh, I'll eat chocolate, vanilla, every imaginable flavor. Uh, you know, I've even been known to eat some Ben & Jerry's. Oh. oh. <laughs> Actually, they're pretty good. But <laughs> I know, but it's really hard to get over there a little less. Uh, that's right. Uh, that's right. You know, yeah. on Fox and Friends, they have the mornings. Uh, they have cooking with Fox and Friends, Steve Ducey and Brian oh. Kilmeade and um, the rest of them. Are uh, you suggesting we start a cooking <laughs> episode? No, well, I, I suggest that uh, he could have offered ice cream for us. Yeah, he could have. Oh, oh you know. my gosh. That would have been great. Mm -hmm. But we'd have to have one of each flavors of the, on his pin there. Oh, that's true. And if you eat too much, you'll begin to look like me. So I, you know, you don't want to. <laughs> which is why uh, the camera I does out. add on 10 which pounds. Which is why I work out. Yes. <laughs> I think they know that. Well, <laughs> it's, uh, it's been great to have me as a guest. Oh, well, we're not so done yet. We have one, one oh. the, the final portion of final the segment. Four. Are we going to talk about the final four? People uh, want to know about the final four. It's one of the biggest events in Minnesota next to the Super Bowl. <laughs> no, that's not a thing. Okay, next time, next time. <laughs> there we go, there we go. But the last segment is viewer questions. And every uh, week we ask viewers to email us and submit questions. We love answering uh, any feedback or questions that you might have. Just as a reminder, you can email Mary and I at contact at the right view mn.com and we will select a few. Now, the, the question from last week came from one of our favorite uh, or one of our biggest fans, Jake. And his question was, in regards to the new House Republican Caucus, mm -hmm. why we haven't joined? Uh, well, um, I think that's a personal preference. I personally um, am very happy with the teammates that I have, and I hope uh, eventually that we can all be brought back together as one family, as one caucus again, because I really, I really have an issue with um, when there's not harmony, when there's conflict, and, uh, you know, I... Um, I can empathize with the four that have left our caucus and, and do value their opinions on why they um, have left. But for me and my district, I, I feel that it is just best to stay with the House Republican Caucus. And Jake, I have not joined it just so that you will continue to ask at every opportunity. So, big plans for the weekend? Yes, let's see. We have a wrestling parents' night for wrestling for my uh, for the Delano High School and the middle school. My son Aiden, who's thirteen, is wrestling, so it's parents' night tonight. And then uh, just uh, busy uh, taking care of the family and doing a little ice fishing, and hopefully catch that big uh, walleye on Lake Waconia. Are you going to be snapping some photos with your private sector job at all? Let's see. Do I have any work? To yes, tomorrow Friday I have to go back to the studio. 
Uh, fortunately, uh, I have a, a storefront in Delano, Minnesota. That's where I represent the Ray County. So shameless plug. Oh, I didn't wasn't going to do that. But yeah, shameless plug. McDonald's Studio Photography <laughs> for all your portrait and commercial needs. <laughs> but uh, because I'm storefront, I do meet with constituents quite often, and they can come into the door. It's best if they make an appointment. Mm -hmm. But uh, my door is always open. So usually Fridays, I do meet with constituents, and then I'll also uh, take some photographs tomorrow as and well. And I've been to your studio. It is a Oots. Well, I mean, thank you. Seriously. Yes, you were fun. You and your family yeah. were great to photograph. We, we love uh, McDonald's Studios. Uh, I myself, tomorrow I will be working my private sector job, doing a little bartending and waiting tables. Super excited. And then on Saturday, my 13-year-old will be working at the Ski Hill, so there'll be some Perfect. running back and forth. Also getting my hair colored. I know ah, you two are so excited about that. It looks a little, yeah. looks like some gray hair yeah. in there and yeah. the yeah. roots. Yeah. Uh, so no, I'm kidding, so excited. I mean... As a woman, I that is one thing I look forward to, and uh, my stylist does amazing work. Uh, Becca Wesley, you are amazing. Um, and then Sunday is church, and church um, some more family time, and uh, maybe clean my house a little bit too. How about you, Eric? You I, well, I am uh, working you as well. Colored? No, I'm not going to color my hair, but. I can tell you, somebody was commenting just recently that there's more gray showing up uh, than there has been the last couple of years. Well, so. as a matter of fact, you guys, your toxic masculinity is kind of showing. So oh, we're, to yeah, we're under attack for our mess. masculinity. I heard about that commercial. Mm -hmm. Well, so. no, don't worry. You, uh, I hardly see anything in there. <laughs> well, the day, well, here. You know, I was told that some silver does uh, make a man look a little yeah. bit more handsome, so yeah. I won't be coloring it if I uh, get more. My wife likes my, the uh, salt and pepper look, so there we well, go. Well, I can tell you I do not like mine, so that's why I hide it. I'm not ready yet. We hear you. But what else other than coloring your hair? What are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, well, I work in my private sector job as well. Uh, as I've told many, that if you're honest, there's no money in politics. And I know that we're all honest, so that's why we're out there working uh, we're doing our work here to represent the voices of the great people we represent. Yeah. But then we also have to go out and work uh, for a living because we have bills to pay too. So working, and then we're actually, so we do real estate investment and we're oh, renovating one of our properties. Oh, that sounds like fun. And well, uh, no, not you, really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being an optimist Painting here. And, uh, construction. You, for those who have well, ever renovated a property, there are a million decisions that have to be made. Obviously, we've done it uh, many times, but even though we've done it uh, many times, uh, right now we're deciding on a kitchen sink and okay. it t is we've been going over this for over a week now on which kitchen sink for this particular property Well, I have, help a, us. I have a, a kitchen <laughs> that I'd like renovated too So maybe when you're done with that, you know, you can just volunteer at my house only if you like travertine or Slate tile I my wife and I we tile uh, and we're big fans of natural stone. Oh interesting. There you go so, Sounds like the next uh, episode will be about uh, tiles. <laughs> there we go. There we go well, friends, we appreciate you uh, tuning in. Representative McDonald, we appreciate you. you being Thank you our having me. It's great. spotlight yeah. special guest. Thanks and I hope everybody has a great weekend. We'll see you next week. Absolutely. Uh, thank you for joining The Right View MN. Thank you. Good.